If you're a screenwriter or a novelist, you might have heard the term Save the Cat before. You might have read Blake Snyder's book of that same title, or Jessica Brody's Save the Cat Writes a Novel. Most of the info in this video will come from Brody's work, so if you're interested in Save the Cat, you want more details on this, somebody to advocate for it and really coach you through it, then check out Jessica Brody's YouTube channel or her website or read her book. I've read both of these books, Snyder's book and Brody's books, several times. So I'm pretty familiar with the Save the Cat concept and the Save the Cat beat sheet, which I'm going to be talking about today. Wake Snyder created the Save the Cat beat sheet as a shortcut for screenwriters to outline their stories prior to scripting the screenplays. The idea is that you divide your story into 15 beats or steps that roughly mirror the steps of the classic hero's journey. So beat one on the beat sheet, and remember, Snyder's writing here for screenwriters, with screenwriters particularly in mind, people who are trying to write films. Brody takes that and adapts it to novels. So this could work for screenwriting or novels, but some of the language might sound a little more screen specific, That's because again, this was originally written for screenplays. Keep that in mind. The opening image is the first beat. Beat one is the opening image. And this is where we introduce our hero and the hero's status quo world. We get our first glimpse of them. The second beat, beat two, is the theme stated. And this is where a character, usually not the hero him or herself, but sometimes the mentor, sometimes a helper or ally, sometimes a love interest, sometimes even the villain or antagonist or a foil of some kind, will state the theme, the lesson that the main character, the protagonist, needs to learn, basically giving the destination to the protagonist's arc. And they'll do that early on. So the theme will be stated early on in the film. But of course, the protagonist will reject it, not believe it, not hear it, not know about it. In some way, the protagonist is not yet ready for that theme. Beat three is the setup, and the setup can include the theme stated. The theme stated can fit right into here. The opening image can be part of this as well. Even the inciting incident, which is to come yet, can be part of this as well. So in the setup, you explore the hero's life and his or her status quo world. You also explore the hero's flaws. Not just their flaws, but the flaws in the world around them. Right? So this is all going to kind of lead us to where the story is going to go. This is going to give you want to build expectations, create expectations in the reader. You're creating expectations for where the story is going to go. So you're letting the reader move ahead of the story a little bit. You don't want them to be able to predict everything, but you want them to be thinking ahead. You want them to be anticipating what is to come next. If they don't have any anticipation in their mind, then they're probably not going to be curious about what happens next, and they're not going to be looking forward to getting to it, which means they're probably going to put your book down or turn your movie off. So you want to give them a reason to keep reading, to keep watching, and that is it. That's where you're starting to build anticipation in this setup. This is where you introduce some of the major supporting characters. You introduce the hero's primary goal, the conscious goal. You also want to reveal the hero's reluctance to change and hint at what these stakes are going to be if the hero does not change. Beat four is the catalyst, AKA the inciting incident. This is an event that throws the hero out of her status quo situation. It's such a big, massive event, such a cataclysm, you might say, that she cannot just return to her old life. There's no way for her to just go back to the status quo world. Beat five is the debate. This is the what uh, Christopher Vogler in the writer's journey calls the refusal of the call. This is where basically the hero decides whether or not they're going to take their hero's journey or not. And usually there's initial reluctance, there's initial refusal. This is where they have to address that. The hero has to show their reluctance to change while addressing the question of what to do next. Beat six is the break into two. And it doesn't mean you're breaking the story into two different stories. It means you are breaking into act two. So this is where you are breaking from the status quo situation. We've already had the catalyst to push the hero out, but the hero didn't want to go. The break into two is where the hero crosses that threshold, where he accepts 
the call to adventure and steps through the gate into the story world, out of the status quo world into the special world of the story. Beat seven is the B story. And this is usually where you introduce some new character that will help the main character learn his or her lesson. So you can introduce a mentor or a love interest or some other kind of foil. Beat eight is the fun and games section. In terms of total story time, this one takes longer than any of the other beats. Vogler calls this the tests, allies, and enemies section of the story. It's all set up by what comes before, by the setup step and everything that happens within that opening act. But this is the point where the hero starts actively pursuing the goal. Right? The hero knows what their conscious goal is and they start actively going after it and confronting some of the obstacles and finding some of the help that they need along the way. Now, this fun and games is part of the meat. It's a big part of the hook of the story. It's in the superhero story, particularly the superhero origin story. It's where the hero has discovered they have powers and is now trying out, experimenting, playing around with his new powers. So in Beat 9, the fun and games concludes with the midpoint. And the midpoint needs to either be a high point or a low point, a false victory or a false defeat. What also needs to happen in the midpoint is something to raise the stakes, to make it more important than ever that the hero accomplish her goal, and something that pushes the hero forward. Beat 10. Now, this is the second longest beat of the structure, and this is called Bad Guys Close In. The bad guys close in, beat gives the opposite energy from the midpoint. So if you had a false victory at the midpoint, things are going to go down at this beat. If you had a false defeat, things are going to go a little bit up at this point. But either way, you are increasing the tension here. He or she, the hero, has a new solidified goal, but their own, their external conflicts and their own internal flaws are closing in on them. Beat 11, the all is lost step. This is the point where the hero hits rock bottom, suffers a symbolic death, sometimes a real death. Sometimes somebody close to the hero dies, somebody, sometimes the hero themselves die and have to be re resurrected. There's all sorts of ways that this can happen. Sometimes it's just a sim most of the times it's just a symbolic death. But it is some kind of death for the hero, some kind of low point, some kind of bottom that he's hit. And this leads directly into beat 12, the Dark Knight of the Soul. I really like that language. I used it myself before. And this is where the hero processes where she is and how she got there. It's the hero's darkest hour, right before they learn the ultimate lesson and make the decision to change. Then beat 13 is the break into three. And again, we're not trying to triple the story here. What we're doing is we're breaking in to act three. This is at the end of the Dark Knight of the Soul. This is the hero's aha or light bulb moment. This is when they realize what they need to do. They finally process the lesson that they've needed this entire story. They process learning that lesson and they realize what they need to do or roughly have an idea of what they need to do and are determined to do it to accomplish their goal. And the finale basically covers the entire climax and resolution. Beat 14, the finale. And this is where the hero shows how he or she has learned the theme, and then they use that knowledge, that new insight, to transform themselves in such a way that they can solve the central problem of the story. The hero's change leads to a change in the world. Not just for the hero, but for everyone involved. And then, of course, beat 15 is the final image. And again, this is the very last moment of the film or the story. This should mirror the opening image in some way, but should give us a visual representation of the hero's life after he or she has taken their journey. So that's the 15 beats of the Save the Cat beat sheet. And here are a few things that I noticed that you might have noticed about this beat sheet. Number one is that not all beats are the same length. Some of the beats are large, taking up multiple scenes or chapters. And some of the beats are just a single moment in time, a single image. Second thing you might have noticed is that the order of the beats is not 
specifically set in stone. So a character can meet their mentor before they cross the threshold, or even before the catalyst happens. The catalyst might happen much later, the catalyst might have already happened by the time the story started. Some stories lump the opening image and the catalyst together right at the beginning, dro dropping us right into the story. Some stories leap from the catalyst to the break into two, jumping right over the debate. Some stories place the fun and games section earlier or later, and some stories jump right over the midpoint. So again, the structure is somewhat fluid. Third thing you probably noticed is that not all beats are necessary for every story. And some stories might require some beats that aren't even there. For instance, does every story need a setup prior to the catalyst? Does every story need a debate, a B story, or a midpoint? I guarantee you can find successful stories that lack some of those, and successful stories that have beats that aren't even mentioned here. So, I do like the Save the Cat beat sheet. I think it does provide a good simplified structure for starting to think about a story in a cohesive, complete way beginning, middle, and end. My issue with the Save the Cat beat sheet is the same as my issue with all structure guides that try to lay out a story outline in specific steps. And that's that the beat sheet, like many other structure guides, purports to be, or is often taken as, a step-by-step -step blueprint that lays out the necessary chronology of a story which a writer might then follow to lay out an exact chapter-by-chapter -chapter outline of an entire novel for any story that that writer might want to tell. Now, if you've done a lot of reading, watched a lot of different movies, if you're familiar with a wide variety of stories, then you're probably familiar at this point with the fact that such a universal story structure doesn't actually exist. There's not just one reliable roadmap to take you anywhere you might want to go. But that said, the Save the Cat Beat Sheet is a structure guide that many successful screenwriters have novel and novelists have used over and over again to produce compelling stories. So even if it's not a perfect framework for every story, the Save the Cat Beat Sheet can be a useful checklist of the elements that your story might need to help it attract the widest possible readership or audience. In a future video, I'll use this structure to break down a well-known story so we can see how it works. But for now, I'd suggest doing that for yourself. Take one of your favorite books or movies and see if you can break it down into the 15 beats I just laid out. Even better, if you have a novel or screenplay idea you've been ruminating on, see if you can lay it out in the 15 beat story structure process. And it might really give you a guideline for where to take that story. But before you do any of that, before you go on and get to your writing and your story planning and all of that stuff, make sure you like this video, subscribe to the channel, and leave me a comment below. What do you think of the Save the Cat beat sheet? Is it a structure that you might go with? Do you like structuring your stories this way? Or do you prefer to be more loosey-goosey with it? What's worked for you? What doesn't work for you? What might you need to make you a stronger writer? Leave that in the comments below. And I look forward to hearing from you guys. Thank you so much. And I will talk to you next time. Until then, good luck and good writing. Peace.